So the point is this. Because of the Defender 20 and the Defender 16, a lot of people have actually been messaging me on my channel and on Facebook and stuff where normally it's just you know, dead silent, especially Facebook. But I've been getting a lot of positive messages, people saying, wow, that fly is really good. Oh my gosh. Well, it's always fly flown this good. In fact, if you look at my channel, go to the shorts and type in CGI and you'll see one video I, I posted that got me a lot of attention over here, but basically got me no attention on YouTube. And it's my drone flying like as if it's on rails. Now, my drones have always flown that good, and I've, ever since I left the Synlog platform and I've made my own drones, I know what a good flying drone is. But, okay, for whatever reason, I shouldn't complain too much, people are finally starting to get it. And I think it is the Defender 20 and the Defender 16, because the, when you juxtapose those two, two drones together, the uh, obvious nature of flight becomes more obvious. And so it's much easier for people who maybe don't have the eye like I do to see all those micro movements that are not good for professional film. Now they're like, well, no, no, I can actually see that there. And so they're impressed. Now, the reason why this is so awesome and important is because all my drones, all of them now, are printed with Polymax PLA. PLA. I'm not even using special you know, special uh, engineering filaments. I'm just using regular old PLA. Okay, well, it's not regular old PLA. No. I will clarify that. Polymaker has managed to find some magical combination because the ease of printing PLA is something I need because I'm not necessarily an expert in 3D printing. I printed maybe 10,000 plus hours of print time between my two printers, but mostly I just kind of throw stuff at it and, and I found what works and that's all I do. And I pretty much only print with PLA or TPU now. Uh, so I wouldn't even know how to print all that really fancy stuff. It's also very troublesome. You know, jams your printer. You didn't get your settings right. The heat wasn't right. The humidity wasn't right. Something went wrong. Okay, it's all failing. As someone who's barely scraping by trying to make my drones, I don't have time for that. So when Polymaker sent me some Polymax, I was in love. Why? First off, this stuff prints so easy. This is a pretty complicated print. You know, I needed to use supports. This takes supports really well. You can see the little bit of white dots in there where the support kind of removed. And you know, you gotta find the perfect height to make sure that you're not sagging too much. And then of course it doesn't just bind to your print, which that's happened before. But this stuff is incredibly strong. Now I printed this in like super light. This thing is not meant for strength so much, but let's go ahead and do the old Dr. Quads test. Before I do that though, I do need to uh, get the chat up the chat should be up here. Let me refresh. I think I'm having a little bit of trouble with my restream these days. Uh, it's been kind of tough. I know uh, Nick has been having trouble too. We're both in China. Excuse me one second. I gotta uh, get some water. Uh. Just a little pro tip to any streamers out there. Drink water the night before and the morning. Because by the time you're on stream, it's too late to hydrate up. Your mouth is dry and then you can't talk right. <laughs> It is a struggle. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and hit. Let's find a nice. Uh... Here's one. Now, this one, I love Polymax White, but I am out of Polymax White. This is the last Polymax White I have, but you see right here, it didn't print so well. Uh, well, you may not be able to see it. Oh, wait, where's. Could you get your camera? I need your camera over here. Yeah, it didn't print so well over here, and I've been kind of holding on to it, hoping that I find a use for it. But realistically, though, uh, I'm never gonna. I'm, I would never ship this out to a customer. And I don't really want to use something that doesn't. That has like a little print defect on it. So let's go ahead and do what we should be doing with it, and just smash it on the ground. Ugh. Okay. Now with this particular frame. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I will probably want to show people close up of it because they're gonna be like, ah, you're not showing us the brakes. With Polymax, what it does and why it's so good over all other PLAs is that it's actually not very strong. It's more duct ductile. I don't know what the exact term is, but it's, it's got some flexibility there. It's kind of like a mix between ABS, TPU, and PLA. It's just like, but it's just a magical mix. They really nailed it out of the park. And I feel like they don't even know how good it is. And sure, my channel's small and my promotion of Max may not make a big impact now but it's like, a, it's like a forest fire ready to burn. This is the best filament that exists on the planet. I don't understand how this is not like just sweeping the nation, like everyone in the whole world's like, wow. And here's why, as someone who knows a bit about injection molding and injection molding plastics, I can tell you right now, this stuff is damn near almost as good as injection molding. Now that, oh, almost, that's, it's not better than injection molding. 
It's impossible to be better than injection molding just by the sheer process of like having those two metal pieces come together, then hot plastic shot into it, filling every, every crevice, all the air bubbles out, switch to homogeneous coagulated, what's the word, they, uh, where it's, it's annealed, you know, I, or I don't know if annealing is uh, a process or if it is the meaning that like, there's no layers, there's no binding, it's all one solid piece. You can't get better than that. That's just simply put, that's the best. Now, what kind of plastics you use in that can affect it differently. But that's what's so special about this. I mean, you gotta think about this. Like back in the day, I remember like well, 2018, I had an idea and I went to Shenzhen to get this idea made and I had to spend a lot of money, like 25,000 RMB just to pay a company to prototype my design. Why? Because you don't wanna just send off your design to injection molding before you know for without a shadow of a doubt that's ready because you have to pay 100,000 plus RMB, you know, 20,000, 30,000 dollars just to get the mold made. Then you got to pay for all the people in the factory, yada, yada, yada. But just to actually make the mold for the injection molding, it's incredibly expensive. So there's a, there was a big process behind that. And that's what's so special about this is that, I mean, this is damn near ready for mass production and it's used, I'm using a 2000 RMB, which is like, I don't know, 200, $300 3D printer to accomplish this. Now, I feel like that's what I'm saying. Like, yes, my channel's small. I'm a small little chicken chicken. But at the same time, it's like a forest fire ready to burn. The right people are eventually gonna pick up on this. You know how you know this? A lot of people in FPV talk down to me, like Sander Sasson. Uh, you know, my drones are this, my drones are that. Oh, 3D printing, PLA, what a noob. Because they're dumb. I'm just gonna straight say it like it is. They're dumb, they have no vision. You know who isn't dumb and who does have vision? I flight. They knew when they saw my designs, they knew when they saw my processes that that was something special. So they took it. Now that was wrong. They shouldn't have done that. But hey, I, you know what I told my wife last night? I actually respect iFlight more than I do Sander Sass and all these other goofs out there. A lot of the people, the manufacturing people that I tried to work with and they were like, well, you know, we don't know if it's a good idea. Like, you don't know if it's a good idea? I'm 3D printing beautiful drones that also seem to be some of the best flying drones in the world on a 3D printer with PLA, like just, the right people or the right time, the right time, the right place, the right situation, and it's a forest fire, it's gonna just explode. Now, I would say this is not nearly as strong as it's gonna be when I put it on the frame because it's actually got these struts right here that will connect to the frame and that will give it rigidity and help spread that uh, impact around the whole frame. Being able to print these high level drones on your own because now we have a strong material in Polymax that seems to be, I'm gonna give it my gas. Like it will eventually break, by the way, especially when it's not locked to a frame, because the frame, when, it, when it's locked to the frame, it has a lot of rigidity, but now it's kind of all the parts are loose, you know? But let's go ahead and just, let's give it a good go. Ow, I'm actually gonna hurt my hand. <laughs> there you go, yeah, you see that it, it, it will deform. Oh, yeah, sorry, gotta show you here. It will deform. This is what it does, which is a fantastic property. That is some serious impacts on this, and it will deform, to be honest. <laughs> so you have to do, just kind of deform it back. Now, the more it deforms in, the, in that one area, the more it will eventually, uh, like, fail. Now, I've flown the Mecha Roach where the middle part failed on me. I didn't even know it until I took it apart to redo it to get different colors. Because a lot of the times it'll fail in one area, and that's just fine. It's okay. You won't even notice it. So this is just really fantastic. I mean, I dare say that this is better than injection molding because you can get different shapes, more complicated. This, listen, this would be incredibly difficult. Sorry, this would be incredibly difficult to injection mold because you have to, when you're doing injection molding, you have two pieces that have to come apart and then you have to, what's called release. It has to release from that mold. So you have to like care about draft angles and things like that. Like I couldn't have a straight thing in there. I would want it to have a little bit of a draft angle so that it comes out easier because if it doesn't come out easier, it'll eventually wear away at that injection mold. So like injection molds have a lifespan, you know, and so like the different levels of quality and stuff. So I would say this might actually be almost impossible to injection mold, but it is possible 3D printing. So, it, you know, and actually some people did come to me, big manufacturers saying, hey, we might want to injection mold some of your stuff. And I was like, well, you can't injection mold my frames, but you might be able to injection mold my props with a little bit of modifications to the design. Now they don't want to do the work, so they just, you know, walked away. Or maybe, you know, it is a lot of money too for them to get into it. You guys want to know why I'm kind of like a, a, a dick about it? You know, like when people come on to YouTube or to Facebook and are like, you can't use PLA to print drones. And I'm like, yes, you can. You know how I know? Because I do it. And because this right in here. 
there we go. Yeah, you see there's a little breakage right there, but you, this is what I'm talking about. It'll break in a fashion that still kind of holds on to itself. Now that was, I, I mean, I catastrophically threw this into the ground like, more times than I can count. <sighs> oh, jeez, man, I'm getting tired over here. Yeah. Break, damn you, you son of a bitch. Okay, I, we finally have a break, jeez. We ha finally have one itty bitty break, which by the way, probably wouldn't have even happened if it, had, if it was connected to a carbon fiber frame. It's pretty chewed up, but it's not, it's protected your parts. And that's why I think a lot of the, my old time customers are, you know, there's one customer, which by the way, he crashed into a river the other day, drones just fine. He did strip his camera screw, which was his fault, but that's it. I mean, this guy crashes, like, if he's watching right now, I'm so sorry, buddy. <laughs> like, I don't want to call you out. This guy crashes constantly. And it's a pretty heavy drone, the Mecha Roach. So it, you know, still flying good. Now, he's had to replace uh, the frame, like, more times than anyone. <laughs> but it's pretty cheap to print. And he's actually a printing guy, so he just prints it himself. I gave him the files. And so it's just really, oh, wait, this, oh, my gosh. It actually wasn't a catastrophic failure. It's still clinging on to life. <laughs> We're not done yet. Look at this. Oh my gosh. It didn't actually break all the way through. It didn't actually break all the way through. Oh gosh, geez. Yeah, this has like no idea what to focus on. There we go. This didn't actually break all the way through. It's still connected. I thought it cracked all the way through. What the heck? It's still connected. All right, one more time. One more time. One more time. Here we go. Oh, my freaking shoulder. Ah, there we go. Finally. Finally, we have total breakage. But even still, probably wouldn't have happened. Probably wouldn't have happened if you had it all connected up.